Well, recently I did a couple of videos on Wheeltop's TX Road gear system. We did the unbox video and then we did the video on how to assemble and get it going on your bike. And I'm going to do a ride review video coming up very soon, except I got interrupted because Wheeltop have released yet another group set. This time it's gravel specific and I'm excited because I've got a brand new gravel frame set that I want to put this on. In the meantime, let's have a look. The presentation boxes, same as the Rode TX version, very nice looking, well made and tightly packed for safe transport of the components inside. This slightly bigger box is the gear system and the smaller one is the brake calipers. Quick instructions how to get your wheel top group going. Left and right shifters, rear derailleur and the derailleur charge cable. Very nice. On first look, these gravel shifters look very much like the TX road shifters. But the rear derailleur does look different. The brake caliper box, very nice, tightly packed for protection. Everything's sort of a dark grey colour, charcoal colour in the packaging. Wool top logo there. So there's your calipers and you've got the attached hoses. And in the middle is a box with all the parts that you'll need. You also get this bleed kit with specific adapters for these GEX hydraulic brakes. Now you'll notice that there's no front derailleur with this GEX gravel kit. You didn't get ripped off, it just doesn't come with it because it's a one by system. Now you'll notice on the left hand shifter there's a gear paddle and so in the future maybe Wheel Top will make it so that we can have a front derailleur, a two by system. So no you can't just connect it to say the Rode TX front derailleur, it won't work. So you'll just have to wait until Wheel Top come out with a front derailleur, a GEX front derailleur. First let's have a quick look at the shifters. Ooh, peely off plasticky bits. So the shifters, and if you've seen the road shifters, TX version, they're identical. These are TX road shifters. In fact, so much so, it's got TX written on them, even though it's a one by system. So these are actually road shifters. However, there is one difference between these gravel shifters and the road. The brake lever itself is aluminium on these gravel shifters, whereas of course the Rode TX version, they're carbon fiber. All the rest is identical, exactly the same. So they feel nice, they've got that ergonomic S shape as they go down, nice rounded corners for your fingers. The gear paddles are plastic, the body of the shifter is plastic, the lever hood is that soft tacky feel, so rubbery plastic. And of course, every time you change gears, the green light comes on. The rear derailleur, unlike the shifters, this GEX rear derailleur is not the same as their road derailleur. At a quick glance, there appears to be nothing on this derailleur that's made of carbon fiber. It's all made from aluminium and plastic and steel nuts and bolts and pins. The jockey wheel cage, where the road version is carbon fibre, this one is aluminium. Taking out the brake spacer, and you can see the caliper is actually very small. Hopefully that's no reflection on the braking power. And the caliper is one piece cast, so it's not two pieces, nice and strong, very good. It's all black, except for the bleed port screw there, and the cap on front, whatever that is, this blue colour. Comes with brake pads already installed and they've got the heat sink fins on them and the hydraulic hose is attached and the fluid inside and it's mineral oil. The parts box has the 140 to 160 rotor adapters, the caliper mounting bolts, compression nuts and barbs and olives and a bleed port hose adapter. Weights and for comparison we're using Shimano GRX RX 825. The pair of shifters, 471 grams for the wheel tops and 440 for the GRX. Rear derailleur, 405 for wheel top and 310 for GRX. The calipers, not including the hoses, 242 grams for the wheel top and 282 for the GRX. Now this group set has the usual wheel top features. Number one, completely wireless. Number two is you can use it with any cassette that you choose, Shimano, SRAM or some obscure cassette because you can program each individual sprocket to its exact position. Any speed, anything from 3 to 14 speed, so you're future proofing yourself. Now this set I've got here of course has hydraulic brakes, 
but because the system uses TX road shifters and these are available also in rim brake, you can also make this gravel group set rim brake. Having a closer look at the shifters, the lever itself, the brake lever, is the same as Shimano. It's a Shimano Altegra. It's got that same ergonomic shape, a wavy shape to it. However, you can see that the lever's slightly bigger on the Shimano one, slightly longer. And because we're going to use these on a gravel bike, chances are we're going to use flared handlebars. So will these road-shaped levers suit our fingers and our grip on the flared handlebar? That's yet to be seen on the test ride, of course. Now these wheel top levers do have a reach adjust at the back. There's a screw and you adjust that so the lever comes in and out from your handlebars, depending if you've got short or long fingers, small hands or larger hands. With the hoods, they're textured on top and underneath. It's good for grip and on the side they're plain, but that's fine. For the lever hoods themselves on the body, very, very firm, no movement whatsoever, very good. If you look at Shimano ones, they're notorious for slipping. This sort of business slips comes loose like <laughs> over time they just seem to get bigger why do they do that i don't know um the wheel top ones on my road bike that i've got have not done that at all they're still fine i've done probably about a thousand k's so far no problem whatsoever still very firmly attached so that's a big plus with the gear paddles, they're textured, so the one at the back has lines on it and the one at the front has dimples, you can feel the difference. Not only that, the front paddle sticks out a little bit more than the rear one, so without looking you can feel which lever is what. Of course, one paddle shifts up your cassette and one paddle will shift down your cassette, but you can swap these around in the app so they're the opposite. Depending how you like it, you can customise it. In addition, the left-hand shift paddle can be programmed to move the derailleur either up the cassette or down the cassette, as well as having the normal right-hand paddle operations, very similar to the way SRAM has. While I've got the Shimano shifter here, you can see if we compare the tops, the, the Shimano one is about a centimetre, just under a centimetre longer. But underneath, where your fingers go underneath, if you put them side by side, I can tell you now, if you can't see, they're identical. So you can fit three fingers under your Shimano one and you can fit three fingers under the wheel top one. They're exactly the same. So it's just the top that there's a bit longer. The body width is the same. There's an LED on the front. If you press the paddle to change gear, it goes green. That means it's sending the signal to the derailleur. And when it goes red, it means it's time to put in a new battery. But that's a long time. There's no facility on these shifters to plug in satellite buttons. Say you want to change gears while you're up on the top of your handlebars, you can do that with satellite buttons. Well, these don't have that. And there's no auxiliary button, say, for changing something on your head units, or maybe even a dropper post. You might want to raise or lower your dropper post, but there's no auxiliary buttons on these levers. Now, unlike the rear derailleur, which is rechargeable, the batteries in the shifters just use ordinary batteries. These are a button battery, CR2032. Now this rear derailleur is programmable, anything from 3 to 14 speed, and you can tune it to any cassette that you want to use. The rear derailleur comes in two cage lengths, and that's the distance between your jockey wheel bolts there. So the medium cage is 75 mil, and that'll accommodate a cassette of 11 to 46. If you go the longer cage, 90 mil between the bolts, it'll accommodate an 1151. Pressing a gear pedal on the right hand shifter sends a signal to the rear derailleur and the green light on the rear derailleur shows that the signal has been received. The battery pack on the back is 800 milliamp hour. It's part of the derailleur so it's bolted on there and it's meant to stay bolted on there for its waterproofness. So it's got a seal around there, it's not really meant to be removed. So you can't just click it off, charge it up and put it back on. The charging port is actually behind there like that, so you attach the charging cable directly to the rear derailleur there. Now I did earlier take apart the battery pack, unbolt it from the road one. This is what it looks like inside. And you can see this waterproof sealing on the derailleur side, and it's also waterproof sealing on the battery pack itself. So it's not really meant to be taken completely apart. You can't take the batteries out of that pack and replace them. They're probably non-standard anyhow. You can't just go down to a hardware store or battery specialist and find the batteries. So I would leave that alone. Leave that up to wheel top. The spring tension of the rear derailleur here is very, very strong and tight. That's very good. And it's non-adjustable. You can't make it tighter or looser. It's fixed there in the factory. 
You'll probably never need to do this, but if you do need to, you can remove the complete jockey wheel cage. For instance, if it's broken or damaged in an accident, or you want to replace it with a longer or shorter cage, a four millimeter hex. Now, it doesn't have any locking mechanism, so no switch here to lock it in place, but it does have a damping system. And I'll just show you the damping system because it's under this fairing here, this plastic fairing. Very small hex, the screw is quite small and it has an O-ring on it. Easy to fall on the floor and you'll spend the next hour looking for it. The fairing slips off frontwards. This 8mm nut adjusts the amount of damping. So as your cage comes forward, it's very stiff to pull forward and it goes back quite easy. <laughs> now you can adjust that with this screw, we'll just undo it a bit. Use a socket, just a little bit, a couple, turn and a half or two turns, and it's about the same now, forward and back, about the same tension. So I'll just do it up a bit. What's well, about the same, do it up a fraction more. There we go, it's starting now, so it's a bit, it's harder to pull forward and easy to go back. And of course, the tighter you do this, now it's really tight. And it <laughs> So the whole idea of this is to stop your chain flapping around when you go over the bumps. This screw here is a limit screw, the high limit, it's got H written next to it. So that stops your derailleur going too far into your spokes. So it'll go onto the larger sprocket, but not go into your spokes. The other limit screw is at the back, there's your battery pack there, and there's your limit screw there. Putting the fairing back on, just fits like that. And then you put the screw back in the bottom. Jockey wheel bolts are three millimeters. Black plastic caps, one on each side of the jockey wheel. So we've got one sealed bearing in each jockey wheel and they've got metal seals on them instead of soft rubber seals. Now just jump a little bit forward into the next video to show you something about the GEX jockey wheel. The teeth on a one by chain ring alternate in width, narrow, wider, narrower, wider, which will fit into the narrower, wider links of your chain. As you can see here, if the narrow, wide links on the chain don't line up with the narrow, wide teeth on the chain rings, the chain won't sit down in between the teeth properly. Move the chain forward or back half a link and the chain sits down between the teeth perfectly. This helps to hold the chain onto the chain ring, stopping it from falling off when you're riding over rough and choppy terrain. This exact principle is applied to the bottom jockey wheel on the GEX rear derailleur. Every second tooth on this jockey wheel is wider and fits into the wider links of the chain, and the narrower teeth between the narrower links of the chain. Move the chain or the jockey wheel half a tooth around, forward or back, and the chain will not sit down on the teeth properly. This prevents the chain slipping over the jockey wheel's teeth, ensuring better guidance onto the top jockey wheel, which in turn guides the chain onto the cassette sprocket selected. In other words, more stable and accurate gear selections. The charging port at the back, the little cap here, it looks like they've improved it. The road one, it never fitted back properly, but this one fits back nicely. That's the B screw. Four small Torx screws holding the battery casing onto the body of the derailleur. The battery and derailleur is all IP67 waterproof, so do not remove these screws. Again, constructed just like the Rode TX rear derailleur, there are multiple hex bolts holding the parallelogram pivots, so do not adjust or remove these bolts. And do not adjust or remove these Torx bolts either. More bolts here, not to touch, and it's a wire, so don't go shoving pointy or sharp tools in here. This LED glows red when charging the rear derailleur, and the charging plug is magnetic, so it self-locates easily. A two meter long charging cable, USB-A on one end, and the magnetic plug on the other to go on the rear derailleur. The charging time from zero to full for the battery is about three hours. And for that, you'll get about 20,000 shifts before you need to recharge again. If you're not sure how much battery life you've got left at any one point, it's always displayed in the app. 
If you think the wheel top gear change mechanism may wear out quickly because it uses a plastic worm drive, here's a view of it. It's metal. The size of this wheel top GEX caliper is rather small. In fact, I'll go far as to say it's actually smaller than this Shimano Altegra. Flip them over and on the back side it actually looks simpler because it's one piece cast it hasn't got two bolts holding two halves together. And as far as thickness is concerned, they're about the same. There are two bolts in the caliper. The bleed port is the silver one. The black one is a factory setting, so don't undo it. The supplied brass adapter will go into the bleed port. This is the brake pads holding bolt, 3mm hex. And on the other side of that bolt head is an e-clip which must be removed first, so you can take that bolt out. To extract the brake pads, the e-clip needs to come off, and come off it does. It comes flying off and goes somewhere, and it's so tiny you may never find it again. The Shimano holding pin is much more practical, but unfortunately it does not fit this wheel top caliper no matter which way you try it. Once the holding bolt is removed, the brake pads slip out easily. Nice that the brake pads have heat dissipation fins. The brake pad material itself just looks like the ordinary resin sintered which we're used to. Apparently though, they're carbon ceramic. Then if and when you want to replace the brake pads, they're compatible with the most common Shimano types here. And having a look inside the caliper, we can see the pistons are now ceramic. The hydraulic fittings are the same size as Shimano BH-59, so both in the caliper and the shifter. On the shifter end of the hose is a stopper, simply cut 15mm back and install the BH-59 fittings. Nice touch by Wiltop here, a metal hydraulic connection receptor instead of like Shimano where it's plastic and easy to split. Both BH-59 and BH-90 olive and barb will fit the wheel top hydraulics. The hoses come already fixed to the calipers and are filled with mineral oil. Of course the other end, the shifters are not attached so you can push the hoses through your frame and handlebars if you need to. The rear is 1550mm and the front is 900mm. That's enough to go through a 58cm frame and fork with integrated bar at 42cm width. On the initial instruction sheet, when you open the gear system box, in the bottom right corner is a QR code which takes you to the app download link. So download that app. Now for each wheel top gear system, there's a separate app. So there's an app for the road, an app for the gravel, and an app for the mountain bike gear system. So if you're like me, I've got both the road and the gravel, there's two apps. So you'll have two apps on your phone so the logistics don't get messed up. Now to connect your GEX gear system to the app, open the app and click on the Bluetooth icon. Make sure your rear derailleur is active, in other words move it and it will connect. By default it should be set to casual mode. This allows the derailleur to go to sleep after a couple of minutes if it doesn't sense any movement. This will save the battery power. If you change it to competitive mode, the derailleur stays on and the gear changing is faster. However, the derailleur won't go to sleep, it will continue to drain the battery. So for this reason, it's best to leave it in casual mode. You can also connect the wheel top gear system to your head unit. This will show you battery life, what gear you're in and more features as wheel top do updates. On their mountain bike OX system, they've got the push button shifter. And guess what? Yep, you can Bluetooth pair it to this derailleur. So instead of having these shifters, you can have flat bar and use the GEX derailleur. What about on your road bike and you want to climb some really steep mountains and you need some extra help, so you need some really big sprocket to the back? Well, what you need then is a longer cage derailleur to take up more chain wrap for those big sprockets on the back. And you can't do that with the road TX rear derailleur, but guess what? You can with the gravel GEX rear derailleur. So you get a gravel GEX rear derailleur. You can even get the really long cage one if you really want to. Put that on and that'll match it up to your shifter, your TX road shifters, and bang, 
you've now got extra huge wide range of gears. Well that's about it, that'll do for the time being for this review of the Wheeltop GEX gravel gear system. We'll continue on with more of a review because it's really got to be put on a bike and that way you can say a lot more about it. In the meantime, I've almost done a thousand Ks on the road version, the TX, and had no problems to date. I'll let you know, we'll do a review of that soon. We've also got another one of our riders and he's riding the rim brake version of the TX and he's had no problems. Although he did try to fit a small chain ring to 34 with a 52 and he's finding the front derailleur just a little bit slow to chain a little bit clunky so with a 34 chain ring should really only be using a 50 anyway he's experimenting but he's fine no problem with the wheel top rim brake version he's absolutely loving it at this stage back to the gravel kit and the rim brake version of that is also available in either 75 mil jockey wheel cage or the 90 mil the price for this gex gravel kit is 975 australian dollars or 599 euro However, Wheeltop are having an introductory discount, and that is up till November the 2nd of this year, so you haven't got long. They'll do a discount, and I've got it here, $81 off in Australian or $50 off in Euros. So if you get that before November the 2nd, after that, then the price will be as normal. The other thing, there's free shipping. You don't pay anything to get it delivered to your front door. Unless, of course, you live in an island in the middle of the Pacific, some isolated place. Other than that, most parts of the world you're fine. In the meantime, I've got to get this on the bike. Here's the frame set I'm putting it on. You've probably already seen it. The ICANN Guerrero. Let's put it over there. Next video, we'll do the gravel bike build with this GEX kit. And there's some essential tips and tricks to getting everything just right. Then there's the ride review videos, so stay tuned, keep riding and stay healthy.